Hi students, in this module you are going to learn about food handling, hygiene and surveillance. As the famous adage goes, you are what you eat. The food should be not only nutritious and of good quality, but it should be safe as well so that food does not become a poison and one does not get the food borne diseases after consuming the food. We are aware in the food safety practices that from farm to fork the food should be handled in a safe manner by each and every person involved in the system so that ultimately the consumer gets to eat a safe food. In this context, the food handling procedures, the food cultivation, the transportation, hygienic practices at every step are very important. The food manufacturers or the food business operators should ensure that there is a proper surveillance system existing within their facility so that the food handler observes all the hygienic practices which he must as per the national guidelines on food safety. In case a food handler has some diseases then the management should take steps to ensure that this handler does not transmit the diseases to the consumers by ensuring again the safe food handling practices. At the end of this, uh, of this module, you will be learning about the food borne diseases and food safety, about the hand hygienic handling of the food in order to make the food safe and about the surveillance of the food handlers. The food borne diseases result in considerable toll on public health. In India, the food borne diseases at the household level is reported to be about 13.2 and at the community level it is supposed to be about 3 percent. These results we have obtained from the survey that was conducted by NIN in the year 2006 and a report was submitted to the health ministry. The report that was entitled as KBP study on food safety and quality of drugs. The risk from death from foodborne diseases is significantly high for certain category of people in the society, namely the elderly, the very young and those with poor immune status as compared to the healthy adults. Lastly, the economic burden due to foodborne diseases may exceed even the cost of an acute illness. This cost or the expenditure is a real burden on the government. First of all, let us learn what is meant by food safety. The food safety has essentially uh, means that food should be safe from farm to fork or what we call as table to table that is safety should be ensured at all the steps that are involved in the food chain right from the cultivation to the transport to the storage and finally to the cooking methods and then the consumption. Therefore, food hygienic practices should be followed during all the steps that I mentioned just now. Now, the raw food items as well as the cooked food both must be stored not only in a hygienic manner, but also at proper temperature that may be required for that particular category of food. For example, highly perishable items like milk, fruits, vegetable, non-vegetarian items require certain cold storage facilities whereas dry food items like cereals, pulses, oil etc. should be stored in a proper manner that mold contaminations do not occur and in this cases the humidity and the other environmental factors play an important role to keep the food safe and make it a quality raw material. How to make the food safe? The availability of the safe food is the basic human right because food gives nourishment to the people and it should not become a source of disease or a poison to the person who is consuming that food. Therefore, food handling during cooking and processing using portable water as well as clean utensils, proper utensils which do not transfer contaminants and proper storage of are very important to ensure that food is not contaminated with the food borne pathogens. The foods are particularly susceptible to microbial spoilage at every step whether it is 
stored or what we call as post harvest uh, storage of the foods and also during the storage after the finished product or the food product has been made. Even at household levels food contamination can occur if after cooking the food is not stored properly. In India the most common bacterial pathogens are the E. coli, the salmonella species, the staphylococcus, shigella which are all implicated in the causation of foodborne diseases. However, in the western countries there is more prevalence of the emerging pathogens like listeria, E. coli 104 etc. But in India also listeria monocytogenes has been reported in some category of the foods. The food contamination by the bacterial organisms also depend upon the nature of the food. There are certain categories of food which are known to be high risk. In this figure you will be seeing the food which are highly perishable and therefore are highly susceptible to contamination. Sprouts for example are no doubt healthy but if the seeds have not been soaked in portable water and during the sprouting process if hygienic measures have not been taken then it could be the cause of bacterial spoilage and growth and an unsuspecting consumer who consumes it will definitely have a stomach ache and vomiting diarrhea or an episode of foodborne illness as we call it. Similarly raw milk if not pasteurized properly and even the pasteurized milk is not stored or extended beyond the shelf life. Now we will discuss about the codex definition of food handler and the responsibility of the food handler. According to the codex alimentarius commission any person who directly handles packaged or unpackaged food, food equipment and utensils or food contact services and is therefore expected to comply with the food hygiene requirements. A food handler is thus any person involved in the processing, production, manufacturing, packaging, preparation, sale or serving of any foodstuff including water and beverages. Hand hygiene is very very important. The hand hygiene properly taken care of minimizes the spread of infectious microorganisms from person to person or between the other living organisms and people. The food handler's hand are not only in contact with food but also with the work surfaces where they work and prepare the food. Therefore, food handlers, the maintenance of food hygienic practices such as washing their hands, keeping their hands clean before and after food handling and during the food handling are very very important and in this video you will be able to see how the hand should be actually washed with soap and water at least for minimum stipulated time uh, to take care that the hand is sanitized properly. The cross contamination of the food material or the cross contamination from the food material of the microbial pathogens does not take place. The cross contamination in food handling involves transmission of pathogens from hands to food from the surfaces of the place where the food is being processed from sponges, towels and other cutleries that may be used, the utensils that may be used and also from ready to eat food. People who do not maintain the required extent of personal hygiene or those who have illnesses can contaminate the food and the surfaces through contact and thereby they transfer the food borne illness causative organisms to the consumers. Access to processing area therefore has to be restricted. Wherever the risks are especially high, access to processing areas may be restricted very very stringent manner. The personnel may be instructed to change to sterile clean protective clothing including the footwear and wash their hands before entering. Surfaces, utensils, equipments, fixtures, fittings should be thoroughly cleaned and wherever necessary disinfected after the raw food has been processed particularly meat and poultry that has been handled or processed. In this figure you will see how uh, food um, basically the vegetable and the meat 
are being cut in the same table and therefore there will be chances of contaminating the food each other from the organisms that may be present in the meat to the vegetable preparation and from the vegetables to the meat and in case of salad vegetable it's very very dangerous because tomatoes and lettuce could be eaten raw and if there are organisms being transferred from meat to these food then definitely it's going to make the food risky for the consumer therefore for avoiding the cross contamination between the food and between the people to the food is of paramount importance you will see in this figure the prevention of the cross contamination that should be followed and therefore it emphasizes once again that the handler should maintain scrupulous cleanliness the important aspect that has to be taken care of in the food safety is the packaging material packaging design and material should provide adequate protection for products to minimize the contamination prevent the damage and facilitate proper labeling there should be adequate space for labeling then the packaging material or if gases are used it must be of non toxic in nature and it should not pose a threat to the safety and the suitability of the food under the specified conditions of storage and use as well as time because you know that always the best before dates are indicated in the packages and if reusable packaging is used it should be durable easy to clean and it should be sterilized thoroughly after a single use next important ingredient in the food preparation after the raw material is the water only potable water should be used in food handling and processing ice steam to be made from potable water if it's going to be directly used in the food preparation an adequate supply of potable water with appropriate facilities are required for its proper storage for distribution and temperature control should be available at all times to ensure the safety non potable water which may be used for example in temperature control or steam production for other purposes refrigeration purposes etc may not involve directly the food handling or these may not come in hand uh, contact with the foods therefore reasonably safe water can be used in these situations this figure shows how the outlay of an establishment should be kept well maintained in a clean and in a neat manner the air quality and the ventilation that is existing in the food preparation area should be such that there is no stale air in the environment and the air can also harbor lot of contagious microorganisms therefore there should be proper ventilation systems in place there should also be uh, ways to control the negative and the positive pressures and to also control the odor and the humidity within the food processing area it is known to everybody that lighting should be proper for any work to be done and more importantly during the food processing we should be able to see the insects or the pests that may be lurking around in the corners and also the food colors and the food preparation etc should be properly understood by the person who is handling that food and for that good lighting systems are required the maintenance and the cleaning establishments and equipments all should be kept in an appropriately neat and clean manner with proper sanitation procedures in place so that cross contamination of the food from metal shreds flaking plasters debris and chemicals do not occur in the food processing area the cleaning procedure should be having a standard operating procedures and it should remove the food residues and the dirt that may be the source of contamination it is also important to use appropriate cleaning methods and materials that will depend upon the nature of the food business itself there is also requirement for disinfection after cleaning and before cleaning certain items machineries etc as well as the floor and instruction should be there in the form of the standard operating procedures or the sops which should be properly displayed in the food preparation area 
cleaning can be carried out by a separate or by the combined use of different methods namely physical such as heat scrubbing turbulent flow vacuum cleaning and other methods that avoid the use of water chemical detergents like alkalis or acids next is the proper pest control system and pests should not harbor in the food preparation area or in the industries that are manufacturing the food products and the source of the contamination from the pest should be identified the building should be properly laid out in such a manner that pests cannot enter holes drains and other places where the pests are likely to gain the access should be kept sealed wire mesh screens or open windows doors and ventilators will have to be properly protected so that the entry of the pest is restricted animals should not be allowed entry into the areas within the grounds where food processing establishments are located and pets are not allowed at all harborage and infestations the availability of the food and the water both encourages the pest harborage because like any human being or living organism they also require food and water for their life therefore the raw materials to be used for pre food preparation should be stored in the pest proof containers and they should be neatly stacked above the ground and away from the walls areas both inside and outside the premises should be kept clean the food waste should be stored in appropriate manner so that there are no chances for pest infestation and it is advisable to store food in covered and pest proof containers at suitable temperatures and humidity lastly the waste management which is the last part of the processing is again very important and suitable provision must be made for the removal and the disposal of waste and waste must not be allowed to accumulate in food handling food storage and other working areas and the adjoining environment the next step in the food manufacturing that is the handling storage and transportation food and food ingredients unfit for human consumptions must be sorted out and the rejected material should be disposed of in a hygienic manner food and food ingredients must be protected from contamination by pests by chemical physical or microbiological contaminants or other objectionable substances during handling storage and transport there should be effective protection against dust and fumes care should be taken to prevent deterioration spoilage through appropriate measures which may include controlling temperature humidity and other controls personal hygiene people who do not maintain an appropriate degree of personal cleanliness or have infectious diseases or conditions then it can contaminate the food and transmit illness to the consumer therefore the health status of the individuals or the food handlers are very very important people known or suspected to be suffering from or known to be a carrier of a disease or illness are likely to transmit through the food should not be allowed to enter any food handling area if there is a likelihood of their contaminating the food any person who is thus affected should be immediately reported to the management about the nature of their illness about the symptoms etc and those who are suffering from jaundice diarrhea vomiting fever sore throat etc or visibly having skin lesions boils cuts discharges from the eyes ears nose should never be allowed to handle the food making activities because they all pose risk to the consumer the above conditions must be reported to the management without fail so that they take appropriate action food handlers should maintain a high degree of personal cleanliness and wear suitable protective clothing head covering and footwear personnel should always wash their hands and when personal cleanliness may affect food safety for example at the start of food handling activities immediately and after using the toilet and after handling raw food or any contaminated material where this could result in cross contamination of other food items therefore food handlers must always use gloves while handling ready to eat food and not use their bare hands people engaged in food handling activities should refrain from behavior which could result in contamination of the food 
what we call the risky behavior. For example, the food handler should not smoke, spit, chew, eat, sneeze, cough over unprotected food and without covering his mouth, etc. Personal should wear should not wear jewelry, watches, pins and other items while they are handling the food because they may unknowingly uh, contaminate the food with these personal items and they could result in causing harm to the consumer as a result of physical hazard contamination of the food. In this context, the surveillance of the food handlers both from their personal behavior and hygiene aspect as well as to ensure they are disease free, there should be a surveillance system which is present in the food production establishment and the management should conduct health screening methods and educate provide training to the food handlers so that any illnesses is promptly reported to the management and suitable remedial measures can be then put in place. The personnel should be observed to check if they are applying the basic food handling and basic hygienic practices. There are also certain exclusion criteria as well as restriction guidelines that must be employed to prevent the people who may not follow the guidelines of handling the food safely. No food handler should work when they have symptomatic gastroenteritis and as a rule any food handler with symptoms of gastrointestinal infections that is diarrhea and, and or vomiting should be advised to remain off the work until 48 hours after clinical recovery when the causative pathogen has not been identified. In the case the pathogen has been identified, specific exclusion criteria for high risk food handlers, pathogen specific exclusion criteria with microbiological stool clearance etc. should all be followed. The decision to exclude any food handler should be based on individual risk assessment and on a case to case basis. Infected skin lesions on exposed body parts, especially hand, forearms, etc., should be adequately covered with waterproof dressing until healed. If they are not covered, then exclusion may need to be considered depending upon the food handling activity. Those with purulent discharges from the eyes, from the nose, etc., should be debarred from entering into the food preparation area and Till they recover from these conditions, it should be ensured that they do not report to work or are not present in the areas where directly food is being prepared or handled. Therefore, the management commitment in this regard is very, very important and it is the responsibility of the management and uh, to ensure the food safety and at no point this can be avoided or ignored and management has certain commitments that is a program of optimum hygiene covering all aspects of food handling, vigilant and competent supervision in this regard is vital. There must also be open discussions and reporting of hygienic problems by the employees and quick responses with corrective measures must be followed by the management. For example, if soap and water is not available to the food handler then it is the responsibility of the management to ensure that the basic amenities are provided to the food handlers or those who are working in the food production areas. There must also be establishment of established optimum hygiene conditions and practices and all the quality control program must be implemented and this should also be monitored for their efficacy and compliance. In this video you can see the mobile vending machines here also the food handling should be properly resorted to premises and structures which are covered here should include the market stalls mobile sales and street premises vending vehicle etc in all these places the food is handled often time in a very unhygienic manner and it's usually a temporary tent or a marquis these premises and structure should be designed and should be constructed to avoid contaminating the food and harboring pests, etc. In applying the specific conditions requirement, any food hygiene hazards that are associated with these facilities should be controlled to ensure the safety of the food and oftentimes this is the responsibility of the state 
or the municipal or the health authorities of the particular area. The food or the safety can be ensured by making sure that hazards do not enter into the food during the time of production. Now the examination of the quality assurance system is usually uh, employed by the following the procedure which is known as the hazard analysis critical control points or it is also known as the HACCP system. In this system the critical points are identified, evaluated and studied so that the entry of the hazards during various points during the food preparation is not going to happen. Application of HACCP to high risk food items therefore can very effectively prevent the contamination of the food. This analysis of course requires identification of the CCPs or the critical control points where the food is liable for contamination. For example, the coliform contamination from the hands of food handlers which can be significantly reduced if the food handlers use soap to wash their hands for a proper duration of time. The food business operators should identify any steps in their operations which are critical to the safety of the food, implement effective control procedures at these steps, monitor the control procedures to ensure their continuing effectiveness and these systems should be applied throughout the food chain to control food hygiene throughout to shelf life to the product through pro proper product management and process design. A model of such food safety system is described in the hazard analysis critical control point systems and guidelines for its application. And finally, the review control procedures periodically as and when the operation changes should also be there implemented in the food business operator's premises. The key aspects of the hygiene control system are time and temperature controls. Inadequate food temperature control is one of the most common cause of foodborne illnesses or spoilage, particularly in our country. Such control should include the time, temperature of cooking, cooling, processing and storage. Therefore, system should be in place to ensure the temperature is controlled effectively where it is critical to the safety and suitability of food. Temperature control systems should take into account the nature of the food, example its water activity, pH and likely initial level and type of microorganisms, the intended shelf life of the product, the method of packaging, processing and how the product is intended to be used. That is whether further cooking or processing is required or it is ready to eat food as such. These systems should also specify the tolerable limits for time and temperature variations. Temperature recording devices should be checked at regular intervals and tested for accuracy or what is known as calibration of equipment which is required under any good manufacturing practices or GMP or the GHP that is the good hygienic practices. Other specific processes steps which contribute to food hygiene may include chilling, thermal processing, irradiation, drying, chemical preservation, vacuum or modified atmospheric packaging. Finally, uh, while applying the food safety handling practices, we have to keep in mind certain golden rules which always applies. The basic foodstuffs, for example, meat or milk, eggs, etc., should be obtained from health approved source. That is, in other words, the vendor should be a certified vendor. Food must be cooked thoroughly and well in a hygienic manner. Cooked food should be eaten immediately or as early as possible. Until the consumption, the cooked food must be stored in proper way at proper temperature and condition. The cooked food should be reheated thoroughly and only once. That is, repeated heating and putting it in the fridge is not a good practice. Cooked food must be covered during storage and when displayed. Contact between the raw and the cooked foods must be avoided. All the kitchen surfaces, utensils, equipments must be kept meticulously clean. Foods must be protected from dust, insects, rodents, animals and from all other sources of possible contamination. Only portable water must be used for drinking or cooking. Leftover and waste food must be properly disposed of. Food containers such as plastic bags, paper bags must not be opened by means of blowing into them by mouth. 
food should not be frozen and thawed frequently and it's preferable not to keep the food for more than 6 hours at the room temperature. The main emphasis should also be on personal hygiene that is washing, hand washing and keeping the uh, hands, fingers clean etc. using protective clothing, effective supervision of the health employees and appropriate action to be taken as and when it is required and hygienic food handling practices must be maintained always. Sound management systems, quality control system with regard to hygiene and commitment from employers as well as from employees is the key to success. So in this module you have learnt the safe hygienic practices that should be observed by every person involved in the food processing, food cultivation, food delivery, food transport and so on. And you have also had a chance to glimpse at the pest control practices, the lighting and the facility outlay etc. details of which you will be learning in the other modules on the same topic on general topic on food safety. Lastly, the management also should put in place a good surveillance system, should have medical records of every worker who is directly coming in contact with the food and to ensure that the particular handler who may have chances of transmitting infectious diseases like maybe tuberculosis or any other form of uh, changes in his hands etc or maybe even suffering from a simple cold and cough that it does not transmit the diseases to the uh, consumers by the process of cross contamination that you have also learnt in this module.